Well, here we have a super cool, uncool 1978 AMC Pacer wagon. You just don't see these around anymore. And it has a number of awesome features. I just think this car is so cool. It sold on Bring a Trailer not that long ago in December of 2022 for $10,000 even. And I think the buyer got a really good bargain for that price on what is undoubtedly going to be the hit of any show that it goes to. You'll notice here that it's a 78 Pacer wagon, and you can tell that it's a 78 in a few ways, or at least that it is a 78 at the earliest. The first giveaway is that it's got that Power Dome style hood that AMC put on it in that year to accommodate the addition of the 5 liter V8 engine under hood. The Pacer had long been dogged as a car that was underpowered from the start and really only had six cylinder engines for most of its life. The 232 cubic inch inline six, the 252 cubic inch inline six. In Mexico only, it got a 282 cubic inch inline six as an option. And then finally, by this model year, the 5 liter V8. In the early years, I think part of the issue was that the 232 and 252 only came with a one barrel carburetor and they just were pretty wheezy. This was not a light car overall. It was relatively heavy for its size. This was also the second year for the Pacer wagon. The first year was 1977. The wagons did have a bit greater overall length by 5 inches. They measured 176.8 inches versus 171.8 inches for the coupe. Both rode atop a 100-inch wheelbase, though. And you can see by 1978, AMC was clearly going for the Mercedes-style look with these wheel covers that were body-colored, something they definitively robbed from them. And you can see those body-colored wheel covers a bit better here. And this car is just in an awesome color. This is Claret Red, I believe, which is kind of a dark cranberry color. It, it looks just fantastic on this car. We're going to zoom in a little bit more on the driver's side door and compare it to the passenger side door and talk about one of the interesting features of the Pacer. And here we are. We've zoomed in on the driver's side door. Make note of the length of this door and where the cut line is. We're going to contrast that with the passenger side door in a second. But in this photo, you can also see something interesting about the door panel as well as the glass. Notice that on the driver's side door, the glass is down, but it doesn't go all the way down into the door. And consequently, because of this, AMC had to extend the top of the door panels a bit higher so that that wasn't visible to the driver and passenger. A really unique solution to what would otherwise be a pretty costly engineering challenge to resolve. So AMC engineers were innovative, if nothing else, for sure. Let's look at the passenger side door now. And looking at this passenger side door, you're probably realizing that it is indeed longer than the driver's side door by about four inches. And that's to provide better rear seat ingress for passengers. This was something that AMC was pretty innovative in this idea at the time. And it was quite functional. You also notice at the top of the car, there is no drip rail for the rainwater to be channeled from around the door. And the door goes into the roof in this particular design. That was really a kind of aircraft-inspired idea that a lot of vehicle manufacturers would pick up on in later times. Some customers would not like the fact that when they opened the door that rain would drop on them. But the Pacer was an early pioneer in this kind of door-into-roof design and sleek aerodynamic body side. And up front here at the bottom of the windshield, we have an interesting feature that I believe AMC was the first to ever do this. And this is now commonplace on many modern cars. And that is, you can see this blackout area at the base of the windshield. That's to cover up the trim so that it didn't have to be finished off and look nice where it joined the bottom of the windshield. AMC just simply painted this black line so that it masked it and you couldn't see it. I think that's a rather genius idea that was copied and used in vehicles still today. Of course, that blackout now extends up along the sides of the pillars on modern vehicles, so they don't have to finish off anything, and you can just kind of leave it there, and the customer doesn't know any different. But I believe this was the first vehicle at the time to have this cost-saving feature, and where else would you expect to find novel cost-saving features than at Humble AMC? Turning now to the inside, we can see that this is clearly a Pacer DL model by these poofy individual bucket seats finished in vinyl trim, and they were indeed comfortable. 
The DL models, kind of across AMC's lineup, had seats similar to this with, I call it the shrugged shoulders look with the headrest in the middle. I think it looks like somebody's kind of shrugging their shoulders. But it's comfortable, and I think it's attractive. And these seats also had a feature that was not commonly found on other domestic vehicles of the era, and that was individually reclining seat backs. You can see the release lever at the bottom of the seat back there. Again, that was something that was not featured on many domestic cars of the era, really for another 15 years, if you will. Uh, and if it was featured, it was optional and a pretty rare option at that. You can also see that the door lock plunger is in a strange spot just above the door release handle. Not quite sure why AMC put it there. It's strange. I guess it works from an ergonomic standpoint, but something that just makes this car quirky. As much as I love AMCs, one of the things that they were not good at was faux wood grain. And this faux burl wood pattern just is totally unconvincing and even more unconvincing than other faux burl wood grain in other domestic vehicles at the time. But oh well. I do like the very, the very vertically oriented clock. I think that's kind of interesting. And you can see the exposed screw heads off to the right. One of the things that AMC did pride themselves on during this time period was serviceability of various components and you could indeed service this car quite easily you can see this car does have an am fn radio and one thing that amc did have was pretty good radios in their cars they did have good sound to them and frankly i would say they sounded better than the radios and the other companies in the big three and here's one last shot of this pacer dashboard it is a bit of a driver oriented theme from a cockpit standpoint with the gauges in this pod, although not severely canted toward the driver, but I think it's an overall attractive theme. Again, you can see this door lock plunger location on the door panel, and that's the mirror control that's right next to the door lock plunger. So all of those within ready reach, I suppose, but just in a strange placement relative to other vehicles. And under hood, this particular vehicle was equipped with the 258 cubic inch inline six-cylinder engine, making about 120-ish horsepower. And I would say that this Pacer also pioneered what Chrysler later called cab-forward design, with the windshield sticking out and kind of going over top of the engine. You can see here the engine is tucked underneath the cowl, and that makes it a bit challenging to service the back couple spark plugs. But again, I think AMC was a pioneer in this so-called cab-forward design with this vehicle. Now, you do see that this has, as I mentioned, the six-cylinder underhood. One little known fact about the Pacer is that it actually was going to use a Wankel rotary engine, a la Mazda RX-7, under hood. And AMC was actually going to, at first, license that from Curtis Wright and purchase it from them. And then they later decided that they were going to buy the rotary engines from General Motors because General Motors was going to convert its fleet over to those rotary engines. Well, after some testing, GM discovered that it was very hard to get the rotary engines to perform and meet emission standards and also meet fuel economy standards, and they had challenges with the rubber tip seals at the tips of the rotors losing compression after a certain amount of mileage. And GM eventually abandoned the program, and that left AMC without an engine for this car. So the engineers had to shoehorn their very long six-cylinder engine under hood and continue on with the program. It was certainly a challenge and it led to the issue you see here with part of the engine tucked underneath the windshield, but there really was no other solution at this point for AMC. And lastly, the Pacer did feature an innovation that it wasn't first to market with, the Pinto was, but it did have rack and pinion steering and not recirculating ball steering. You can see the rack here. This gave the Pacer, really precise feel to the steering and quite accurate steering compared to what most people, especially today if they drive one of the old cars, would deem to be very imprecise recirculating ball steering. And AMC also did endow the car with a different front suspension than was typical for them during the time with the coil spring in between the control arms on the front suspension. And they really did try to isolate the ride on these cars. This does have a subframe with rubber-mounted bushings. So AMC was trying to really make this a relatively refined car with good handling as well as comfort. 
Hope you enjoyed this video on this particular 1978 AMC Pacer wagon. What a cool car. If you liked it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.